This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, February the 12th, 2019. Today is the feast day of St. Miletius of Antioch, who presided over the Council of Constantinople in 381 AD, from which we get the Niceno-Constantinopolitan Creed, and which brought a definitive theological end to the Arian heresy in the church. The priest, Arius, basically taught that God was not an intact trinity, but that the the Father created Jesus at the time of his conception in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, Arians believe that Jesus is God, but that the Trinity is not the true nature of God himself. And this can seem like theological semantics that don't really matter. But the end result of Arian beliefs is that Jesus is not really God or that there's really more than one God. On the one hand, you end up with the modern family church, the oasis of rivers of love and family where Jesus is more of a character in a book than a real living person. On the other hand, you end up with the something more akin to voodoo where this God needs that and that God needs this and all of them are somehow in conflict with each other. Take Martin Luther's explanation of salvation where we are basically just sacks of dung which Jesus has to smuggle into heaven. That's basically the conflict and the continuation and the completion of the way that Arian heresy thinks. Today is the birthday of Georgia. It was 1733 when James Oglethorpe of jolly old England settled the city of Savannah and founded the last of the 13 colonies. Three years earlier, Oglethorpe had chaired a parliamentary committee on prison reform in London. The committee documented horrendous abuses in three debtors' prisons, and as a result of the committee's actions, many debtors were released from prison with no means of support. Oglethorpe viewed this as part of the larger problem of urbanization, which was depleting the countryside of productive people and depositing them in cities, particularly London, where they often became impoverished or resorted to criminal activity. To address the problem, Oglethorpe and a group of associates, many of whom served on the prison committee, petitioned in 1730 to form the Trustees for the Establishment of the Colony of Georgia in America. The petition was finally approved in 1732, and the first ship, led by Oglethorpe, departed for the New World in November. Today in 1924, George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue premiered in a concert titled An Experiment in Modern Music in Aeolian Hall in New York City. It was performed by Paul Whiteman and his band with Gershwin on the piano. The piece is nearly 20 minutes long and it brings together classic jazz, experimental improvisational styles, all within the structure of a piano concerto. The piece was requested by Whiteman who wanted to push the boundaries but his idea was very nearly upended as he discovered that both Irving Berlin and Vincent Lopez were planning similar events. And it became necessary to rush the project. And so Gershwin only had five weeks to compose this career-making piece of music, which established him as a serious composer. Finally today, happy birthday to Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States. Born 1809 at Sinking Spring Farm near Hodgenville, Kentucky, he was famous, first in a series of debates in 1858 with Stephen Douglas. Lincoln was the young Republican and Douglas was the seasoned Democrat. Those speeches and those debates made a name for the young lawyer, and he swept the northern states in the presidential election of 1860. Lincoln's reputation is somewhat difficult to parse due to the partisan political histories that have been written after the war between the states. He was assassinated in 1865, just after the war ended, at the young age of 56. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.